Hello all again. Uh, this is going to be a video about uh, my propane burner that I'm designing. Uh, I've already built one similar to it. The only difference is the length of the interior is longer on this one. I want to see if it improves it. And I added the bridge on the back to make it a naturally aspirated burner rather than one that's hooked up to a blower. So I'll take you through the whole process and show you all the pieces of it and the actual patterns that I got that I 3D printed. Okay, now that you've seen all the pieces, uh, let's go into how I printed at least one piece. I'll use a bridge pattern for this one. First thing I got to do is rotate the pattern so parting line is at the table. Okay, the part is located how I want it, so let's set my parameters and hit slice. I will get a warning saying the part is out of the envelope, and I just kind of ignore that and let it slice and do its thing. Okay, slicing is done. Uh, it's got my tool path up there, and I will save it as a .gx file in uh, FlashForge uh, Slicer. And we'll uh, double check and make sure all the parameters I set were right before I make any other changes or get into a new model. So let's see how it looks. Yeah, the parameters were okay. I forgot to record that one, but here I'm going to flip the part over and make sure the parameters are still the same and uh, run the toolpath on this part. This will be the other half. Okay, slicing is done, so let's uh, just run it through the G code, through their simulator there, and I can verify everything worked the way I wanted it to. And then I'll save it as uh, GX code again, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are. This is the completed bridge pattern. I can get that in there for you. 
Um, the reason I had to flip it over the part is basically symmetrical as a casting. But I put the holes in, modeled them into the part, so they got their solid holes and then I could ream them out to the correct size for a 3 16 dowel. Um, so the part is complete. It's ready to be mounted or I could mold it loose. I'll just putty those in if I do it loose. I don't like loose patterns, never did. But um, the reason you can tell a cope and drag in a loose pattern this would be the cope because that way if you got a problem with your pins they get broken, damaged, anything like that you can drive the pin out and replace it. If it's a mounted pattern this would be the drag because you'll put it on a board or a match plate if you prefer um, and when you get it on the match plate you'll drill through these holes to line up the uh, cope side. So, and that'll work for the gating too. You drill your holes in the gating if you got cope and drag gating. And that's that. So I got the pattern built. Come on, get back up here. And we'll put those right over there. And then you saw the model of the uh, core box. So here's the completed core box, both halves, and the nice part about it is they don't have to glue anything together, it is put together like so, clamp it, ram it full of sand, see I'll be using CO2 sand. Um, as far as draft goes, there's draft on this face to match this face in here. This has zero draft on it because this is an open end here. So draft is not needed on that. And that mates up with this edge here. So that's the pattern for the bridge assembly. It was pretty easy. Then of course here's a little cover. That was kind of a waste of time to print. I could have sanded and sawed that out and few minutes but anyway that's beside the point so the actual Venturi since I said I like mounted patterns this is a pattern and mating the cope this is a cope side pins are on this side so that's a drag gating will be here in the drag with the cope end gate um, there will be a fillet on this side and I'll show you the gating at a later time but that's the pattern for it and then here's the core box loose piece core box so this will cross through between this hole and that hole I can drill a hole in one side past the center put a hole in here for the Tweco tip and screw that in place and it's ready to go. This will also be a CO2 core but this one has to be pasted together and of course I got draft on both ends here. So that takes care of this pattern. Um, the one thing I did do, the reason I got these rails on here, is I printed this thing in a vertical position like that. The reason I did that is that makes all these print layers going this way. Makes it easier to draw out of the sand here. Or if I would have laid it down like this, I would have had all these ridges going this way. So I did it like so. I did it on the other core box too. So I split it right here. Did one half like this and the other half like that. And that worked out really well. These were just... Uh, Afterthought, I didn't really trust the glue, but you know, that's just me. Not a problem. And the other thing I was going to point out is if you have a problem with alignment on your uh, pattern and you want to find out where it is, this is what we call fingers. And what it does, it's 
I printed this one off. We usually just made it out of plywood. But what happens is, is you got a shift in the part. You can slide this over your board, check the alignment on this side, compare it to the alignment on that side, and tell if you got a shrink. Or not a shrink, a shift. So that's what it's for. You can go all the way around the part and verify that everything is lining up properly. Uh, let's see, there we go. So that's what that's for. The other thing it's good for, let's move this out of the way, is on this pattern here, I want three studs on the back side of this. This is a drag. On the cope side, I want three studs here, here, and here approximately. But I got nothing on this side to really align that to. So what I can do is I will set this like so, put that on there, then I can come over to this side and I forgot my pencil, hang on. So using the, here I am, so using the fingers, I can put that on there like so, come over to this side, mark that there, come over to some place over here, put that on there about like so, hold it down, come over here, and mark that side, and let's go up, yeah, let's go right about in here. Put the fingers on that way, like so. Come over here, mark that side. Now I got three locations. From there, measuring the diameter of this, I got the radius. I can swing three arcs off of those lines to get to the center. And then I can locate my, uh, where my three uh, bosses or pins are going to go. And that'll allow me to, uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll stick a quarter inch uh, copper, or not copper, brass tubing where I want them in three locations. And that'll allow the metal, it'll be up in the cope, it'll allow the metal to come up however far it comes up and give me enough room in there to tap that stud sticking up so I can drill and, or not drill and tap it, but I can tap the studs and put a nut on them for whatever I want to mount it to. So that's what that's for. But I got about uh, six castings I got to make for my next uh, trip out to the foundry area. Well, that's about it. Okay, you guys have a good day and we'll get to you next time. Hopefully with some castings. Talk to you later. Bye.